All right, hello. So today I want to talk about the workflow for uh, setting up hair in Marmoset um, and alongside Krita. This character is Iggy. He was designed by Trent Kenyuga. I'll be using this model for demonstration. I recently found out that Krita allows you to paint directional maps and it does a very, very good job of it. So this is the result that we're going to be uh, looking at. Um, I'm not going to go from start to finish. I'm just going to talk about just um, going through one strand uh, just to kind of uh, shorten this video a bit. <laughs> All right. So um, this is my hair setup, but the first thing we're going to do is uh, paint the directional map. So um, in Krita, this is the directional map I've painted. Um, in order to paint this, I went into the uh, brush settings. I selected tangent normal and I switched it to tangent normal drawing angle. Um, so this is going to be based off of the angle that you're uh, drawing your strokes at. Um, okay, so to start, let's just close that. Get out of here. Stop. Okay, fine. Um, and I'm just going to create a new layer. And all you do is um, you just paint with your brush. So if I were to paint up, you can see that it's red, right? So this, is, this would make light travel up the uh, hair as opposed to down, um, which might be what you want. Um, it's really up to you what direction you want the light to travel along the surface. Um, but I went uh, with down, so you just kind of stroke in the direction you want um, and kind of just follow the flow of the hair. Um, one thing to note is my brush is actually pretty small right now. Uh, you want to keep your brush fairly big, as big as you can, uh, just because any... Um, streaks will be noticeable in in the um, in the final result so you don't want to have any strange artifacts um, and you want to be careful about stuff like this little dot here fortunately it's not on an actual hair strand so it doesn't affect anything but if you um, at the beginning of your stroke you might want to start your stroke above um, where you want to be because sometimes you'll get that little um, artifact in your stroke so you can just uh, avoid that all right, now that we have our directional map set up from Krita, we're going to move into Marmoset and set up the hair shader. So this process starts by um, setting up the basic normal stuff that we normally do. So that would be things like add the normal map, roughness, or specular gloss and whatnot. So we'll start with the normal map, pop that normal map in there, and then we are going to go into the gloss, or in my case it's roughness because I use Substance Painter to create it and I was in roughness mode when I was doing the whole character but I just invert it here um, to make it act like a gloss map uh, and then I put in my specular map which I uh, was just using my ambient occlusion uh, the idea was I didn't want it to um, be shiny at the tips and you'll notice it's super weird right now just because the intensity is all the way up there <laughs> and you can't really see what's going on because the hair is white so we're gonna drop the color on there as well There we go. Okay, cool. So we can see that things are starting to happen here. I want to dial in. Uh, yes, so now the issue is that it's acting like a regular blend because it is a blend. So we want to switch to anisotropic. So now we're going to start getting that hair thing going on, but it's acting a little bit weird. By default, it just uses one direction. So if you had UV uh, laid out your UVs, if we go back to Krita and look at the UVs, if you had laid out your UVs so that all the hair pa points in one direction, it wouldn't be a problem. But you can see here that I have hair that's kind of pointing off to the side. These ones are going off to the side and things like that. Um, that's when you're going to have issues in terms of the direction of light traveling on the surface. So we are going to pop in our dandy little direction map, which is in here somewhere. Hair direction, yes. I saved it out as a targa, so there's my targa. And there you go, you can already see that things are starting to happen. A little intense, so I'm just gonna knock that back a bit. And there you go. So now we have um, a nice hair look going on. And if you wanna push it a step further to make it feel more like hair, we're gonna add a secondary reflection of anisotropic. Um, I like to turn off the Fresnel because it just doesn't look right. And 
we're gonna we're gonna make this a little bit up oh, there we go okay so this is going to be it should be less glossy because it's going to be like a secondary shine and then we offset a little bit with our refraction shift less gloss and you could you could play with this for a very long time if you want and I definitely played with it for a very long time, um, but we can look at my other my other settings just to compare. Just because I don't want to be sitting here dialing this all day. Oh yes, I forgot to add the direction map. That's why the specular there was acting a little bit funny. I noticed. So we're gonna have to put the direction map in the secondary shader as well. Pop. There you go. And. There we go. See now this is on the right side. Before this is moving upwards instead of downwards when I was using the refraction shift, so it's a bit odd. But there you go. And then you can just dial down the intensity, make it less or more glossy. Uh, I like to add a little bit of color to the main shine, just a touch. Um, you got to be careful. Uh, a yellow would be good. Um, some advice that a friend of mine gave me was that um, you want to think if this is a fluorescent color what color it would it shift to so if it's red it would go from like red orange yellow um, or I guess that's heat or something like that uh, and that's it so there you go hair is set up and you have some nice flow to it uh, one other thing that you could do as well I've seen or I've done even is add a little bit of an alpha to kind of taper off the edges so it kind of feels a little bit softer you can also uh, you also want to look into your gloss and speculative maps. I should actually show that. Um, so I'm going to open this up right now with Photoshop in this case. We're using all the tools today. Just to keep in mind what I did here is, um, so as I mentioned, I painted uh, off the bottom. So this is a roughness map. So anything that's brighter will be less shiny. And this way I made it so that you don't get when you rotate it sometimes the light would because this is a flat surface it would just light the whole thing up and it looks a little bit weird so I kind of uh, cov uh, covered that up a bit and I also painted in some streaks so that you can kind of get a little bit of a breakup in this line and it feels more like hair but uh, yeah that's it I hope this was helpful uh, we're gonna just play a little animation on there see the hair in motion and that's it for today thanks for watching and stay tuned for more future tutorials